got a story to tell. A yarn about cow country and cow punchers, cattle and men. I was working for the Stroby Ranch, learning my trade. Trade of worn leather saddle blisters and branded irons. Trade with some song, some fun, some blood. It was as good a job as a man could ask for. Lonely sometimes, cold, so much distance you thought you'd never get back. But for me, a young kid, it was a fine time. Memories are mostly good. You're up there on top of the world where the air was clear and thin. The only sound was the wind in the pines. We were in the business of growing beef, always moving the cattle, looking for new feed. They were those new bald-faced Herefords, not like the Longhorns, wild and spooky, but friendly critters, gentle as a dog. Seasons melted away, peaceful, from spring to summer, fall, then winter. Cows had to look out for themselves in the snow. The winter drift. Soon as a man on horseback could get around, they'd go out and locate the cattle, spot them for the spring roundup. They'd come back from the winter drift, cold and worn out. Our foreman was Owen Daybright. He knew what he was doing. We all liked him. And there was his foster brother, Lee Strobe. Their father owned the ranch. The night they got back, the trouble began. Well, look what's turned up. Hiya, Cal. People still drink whiskey? Hiya, Lee. Beat down to my shoes. That's what comes from working for someone you've known too long, Lee. See my wife this winter? Jen come in town a couple of times with your old man. How'd Arch look? Oh, just fair, I'd say. Cold weather always seems to bother him. How'd Jen look? Way to find that out is go home and see for yourself. Yeah. Can I borrow your razor, Cal? I don't want to scare her. In the back. Keeping you busy, Doc? The night I've been trying to get him all day for that girl that used to work at the Eaton House. Lily? I wouldn't know her name. What's her trouble, Doc? Oh, small variety. About that big. Arrived a couple hours ago, they tell me. You wouldn't go? That's right. I don't take calls like this until I hear from the father. And that isn't likely. Get down and walk over here so I can see who you are. Get down now. Owen, is that you? Yeah. Put that gun down. It's a friend. doing here? Helping. Nobody else would come. So I heard. How's Lee? Want to see you. I'll be home as soon as she's asleep. Who's he? Her brother Dick Faskin from out of town. He spent the day looking for the man. Lily all right? You've got company, Lily. Hello, Owen. Lily. Pan size. And beautiful. Good color, too. doctor wouldn't come. Jen came instead. Don't you even think about it, Lily. Not now. I'm really pretty lucky, Owen. I couldn't face up going back to the restaurant to work. Mrs. Burke offered us work out at her place when I'm ready for it. We're grateful, too. 
sounds queer to say it here and now, but he'll have a good life, Owen. I'm sure he will, Lily. I'm sure he will. Thanks. You've seen me before, Owen. There's been a change. Somebody washed your face and got you a new dress. Arch. And a tub in my own room. I bathe every day now. It's an improvement. How was the winter? Well, we stayed alive and we kept the cattle alive. We were snowed in at the ranch. Didn't see our nearest neighbor in nearly five weeks. We missed you, Owen. I brought Lily some grub. Owen. Who was it? Good night, Jim. You live in these parts? Around here. Who's the father? That'll be Lily's business, wouldn't it? I'll find out. Sure. I'll find out if it takes me a lifetime. Fine. It's a nice country to live in. Foster brother, ain't he? That's right. How much? Five hundred dollars. He brought this food, too. Why? You're wrong. He's good. And there's no one else around here like him. And again. Yeah, he keeps his ace as a kicker, and he draws to it every time. Three times. Mr. Kicker. It's a game of chance, boys. We'll play again sometime, huh? I ran your errand. Thanks, Owen. It's paid for. You pay for a coat. I appreciate it. This isn't the first time you saved my hide. Why don't you grow up, boy? Look, it happens. I sleep good. Your wife was there. Does she have any idea? Mm -mm. Oh. Happened before I met Jen. Even so, she wouldn't understand it. You know what she's like. Why should I know what she's like? Well, that's right, you don't. She's what all the others weren't. She's everything I ever wanted for myself. It's been a long time. Let's get back to the ranch. Stand where you're at, Dave, right? You, move away. You brought Lily $500. That's right. Don't you need it? Not that kind. That wasn't grub money, it was get out of town money. I'll ask you one time. Was it yours? Point that gun to the floor, son, and turn around. There'll be other times. You're a conclusion jumper, my friend. I don't like them. 
Quit it, Owen. I'll handle this myself, Con. Not as long as I'm sheriff. All right, Con. You've scared me twice tonight. Next time you point a gun at me, shoot it. Evening, boys. Hello, Mr. Hello, Willoughby. Mr. Willoughby. Thought you might want some hot coffee, Arch. Well, thank you, Mr. Willoughby. Same old dishwater? You don't want any, huh? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, watch your language. <laughs> How's the bad stomach? Owen, some days I doubt if I'll make it till sundown. Well, why don't you stop eating your own cooking? Oh, I'm stuck here. Can't help it. Arch, these cigars ain't from Pittsburgh. Kansas City. Hmm. Place sure isn't going downhill fast. How'd it go? Ask the foreman. I just took orders. You got a wife waiting for you. I hadn't forgotten. I'll look in on her. Good night. Good night, son. Nightly. Boy looks trim. Nobody could have worked harder this winter. He's got a lot to make up for. He'll come around. Maybe Jen has something to do with it. Anyway, he can handle it alone now. Well, it sounds like you're giving notice, Owen. Well, he's married now. Jen's a fine daughter for you. I'm just crowding the place. Oh, if you're not comfortable here... We... I'm not forgetting, Arch. You've done everything you could to make me belong. When you picked me up, I was just a... just a stray off, foul-mouthed and flea-bitten, 15 years ago. It's been a long time, a good time. Now it's time for me to go. You really mean it, sir. Well, I want to push on, try my own wings. Owen. How do I say this? When I took you, it was for Lee. I couldn't get around outside and raise my own boys, so I picked you to do it for me. What I didn't know then was that I needed you, too. Need you now. All right, Arch. I was just hitting you for a raise, anyhow. Night. Night. Jen, will you hurry up and come on out? I don't know why all of a sudden you can't get dressed in front of me. I'll be two more minutes, Lee. On top of all winter, that's a long time. I know that. Better than you. You mean you've missed me? Of course. You're beautiful. Do you think so, Lee? Do you really mean it? First time I saw you, you were wearing a pair of split breeches. And you helped me come out of the back country. You and Arch. This is the second Sunday dress I ever owned, Lee. First one I wore to my mother's funeral, and, and then I used it to bury my father, and then I burned it. Now you're a lady of fashion, huh? Well, that's that's what it says in Goaty's Lady's Book.
I haven't done many smart things in my life, but marrying you is one of them. We'll be happy, Lee. Nothing can stop us, honey. Sun to hit your dimple cheeks. <laughs> you Sunday men haven't lost any sleep in so long, you've forgotten what you go to bed for. Well, Mr. Willoughby's buttering the foreman. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I slept late. Why is it though when a man's out on the range all by himself and eating his own cooking, he looks forward to getting up for breakfast? Because well, when he's home, he lies there and has to figure out if it's worth the belly ache getting up for. <laughs> you uh, ain't done the contract with this outfit, Esther Lee. Anytime my cooking gets so bad that you've got to go hungry, I shall give you your time before you know what gave you the miseries. That's telling them, Mr. Willoughby. No offense, sir. Mr. Willoughby accepts your apology. I do. Sure there's no hard feelings? How about uh, another cup of coffee? Sure. I have to move you, Sheriff. Taking the senses again? Yeah. I like to see who comes and who goes. Hello, Hub. I got your letter a week ago. You're a uncle. How's Lily? She's doing all right. Who's that? The law. Brothers, ain't you? I'm going to kill a man before I leave here. Anybody special? Or what I do. I don't know the man yet, but I will. Keep an eye on me. The name's Faskin. Where are the horses? Behind the depot. Faskin boys were looking for Lily. They heard she'd been taken in and given a home by a widow woman named Mrs. Burke, who owned a ranch nearby. We're looking for Lily. We're her brothers. I didn't know Lily had this much family. Never said a word. Maybe she's ashamed of us. Not Lily. She's not that kind. She's in her room. I'll call her. Never mind, Mr. Rowan. Yeah. So you sent for him? The reason's over there. I didn't ask for you to come. I didn't ask for you to come, do you hear? We're this kind of family. We don't waste any love on each other. We fought amongst ourselves. We've even shot at each other. We got one tie. We're blood relations. Go away, Hub. Go away. You want to marry your own day, Bright Lily? I don't want him, and I don't want you. I'll manage myself without any help. Daybright knows something. If he can't talk when I get through with him, he'll write the name with his feet.
You know there's no way to break a horse. Now get on him and ride him like you were taught. Did you have to use that whip? Oh, it's touchy. Stop being such a farmer. A good whipping never hurt any filly. Come on. All those authorizations come in? All but Mrs. Burke's. I'll ride over. Cut me a horse, you. You want for yourself. Good to hear. Well, thank you. Well, I just asked because... because you look real fine, Lily. Just fine. Your breakfast? Mr. Willoughby's best. I can outcook him with my two arms broken. <laughs> Business first, then we'll trade recipes. Write me a note authorizing us to cut out your cattle at Roundup and bring them home. Been wondering if I was being snubbed. The only thing could snub you is a mountain. <laughs> I'll get paper and pen. <laughs> Thanks, Owen. But I'm all right again. Look fine, Lily. Yeah, that's what Huey says. I wish I could find the words to thank you for bringing me the money, but I can't. Well, don't try. I hate to see you fronting for Lee. Well, I'm... I'm thinking of Arch. I know. You go on standing in front of Lee, protecting him, letting his dirt rub off on you? Maybe. And I'm thinking of Jen and all she's done for me. That's why I can't tell. So we'll both keep it a secret. Lily, it ain't right Owen, that you should... I've been afraid of a lot of things this past winter. What people would say about me. How I'd raise a baby. How I'd keep us both alive. Well, now it's happened. And I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not glad it happened. I was wrong. I know that. I'm just not afraid of living anymore. Dave right here. In the house. Start walking to that shed over there. Why? You won't get hurt if you don't break for the house. Go on. You bought your ticket, you'll see. Sit down. Bye, ladies. See you after Rondo. Stay bright. 
So you sent for Big Brother. Why don't I remind myself to pack a gun when I visit my neighbors? That money was yours, Daybright. Oh, it was, huh? That baby's going to need a name. Yours. You want another helping? Oh, come on. Pull the trigger. First you shoot me, and then you got to shoot Huey because he saw you. Then you'll have to shoot Mrs. Burke and your own sister because they'll see you. Well, come on. Pull the trigger. Quit it on, he'll do it. No, I don't think he's got the guts. Put that down. That gun down, big brother. You won't use it. And I'll break your arm if you keep it. She's only your sister. You gotta kill somebody. Be careful who you poke in the belly. Huey, that's enough. Whatever you say, Lily. All right, Hub, this is still our dance. No, Owen. Haven't I made enough trouble for myself? For my baby? You wanna add murder, too? Go and take them to the sheriff. If you need someone to sign the complaint, I'll do it. All right, Lily. You got the right. Come on. Go on. Well, here are the Lazy W's for sale. How much? Oh, they're asking $35,000 cash for it. That reminds me. You owe me some money. I generally do, aren't you? Joe Benson told me yesterday at the bank that you were overdrawn. Well, don't worry. The old man covered it for you. Thanks. Still trying to fill those inside straights, huh? I always forget what you told me. Hey. Have you been spending our money? You know, that's a joint account. How much did he draw? $500. Said you drew it in gold. <laughs> Makes a nice clink in the pocket of that. <laughs> I'll see you later. I've got to get ready for work. Yeah. Is there some cream there, Jim? Excuse me. Huh. You don't believe that story about the 500, do you? No, I don't. Well, look, honey, there's certain things that you've got to understand. I don't like Arch knowing everything that's going on. Yes. And I can understand you're not wanting him to know. That $500 is a lot of money. I didn't like taking it out of the account either, but... Well, it... Uh, it was for a lady's honor. Stop it, Lee, stop it. I know all about you and Lily. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Oh, honey, that $500 was to help Owen out. I don't want Arch or anybody else to know about it. But now that the fat's in the fire, I guess I'll have to tell you the truth. You see, Owen got in trouble with Lily. And the least I could do to help him was... Well, you know how much I think of Owen. The least I could do to help him was to give him the money. You're a liar. You're a mean, contemptible liar. Hey! You're all alike. You and Arch and Lee. You could be a little You're clearer. You're all a pack of liars. Well, I'm through. I'm leaving. Slow down to a walk. That $500 you gave Lily, I know where it came from. Now, wait a minute, Jen. Protecting him again. Fighting with Lily's brothers. You've known all about her and Lee from the start. It's just a lot of talk. I'd pay it no mind. Owen, why can't you be your own man? 
these misunderstandings happen. All married people have a quarrel once in a while, I guess. I hate him. Jen. You and I are kind of in the same fix. Arch is all the family we got. With him, we belong to something. Shouldn't we give him back a little bit in return? Owen, what can I do? What can I do? Stay around. For Arch. All right. But all I'll do is stay. Morning, Mr. Kicker. Hey, hey, Owen. What fell on you? A couple of hard cases. Brothers. Name of Faskin. Faskin? Two of them? Lily's clan is gathering. Do they know? You're still alive. Do you think they'll find out? Well, not for a while. The sheriff's got them locked up. How long? Week. They'll try again. Who'll tell them? Well, Lily might. She doesn't want to, but they're, they're kind of hard to handle. Well, what do I do? You wouldn't do it. Let's see. There's only one way. Take Jen and get out. Stay away from here. Begin all over again. Because you've worn this place out and all your friends with it. Sure. It's either that or get shot. <laughs> with me gone, the ranch is yours. Nobody can stop you thinking that. But don't say it to me. All right. Hurt you? One day you belt me once too often. Now, you boys are going out on a big roundup. If you ride with a short or underfed string, you might as well be afoot. Now, here's a horse you can have cheap. A real Saturday afternoon bargain. Sound of limb and body. Rune, he's been burned so often, he looks like a brand book. Just give me an offer. I may got about 12 brands. What do you say, Lee? Oh, I say a good round dozen. That means 12 unhappy customers. <laughs> oh, Rune, I pass. Oh, all right. Anybody else? Take him away. Put him out the grass. Let's see the next. All right, all right. Yeah, I got the best cow horses this side of KC. I got a pedigree comes with this one. Name your price. Yeah, let's look more like it. Yeah, let me take it. Open the gate, boys. through town on Saturday. That team of Wilfonts took after you and almost ran away. Well, don't blame me. Blame the horse. He whistles and everything follows. <laughs> hey, hold on. I ain't through yet. You sure are. Can't you hold your breath a minute? Put him away. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if the Plaskin boys are comfortable. Who cares? Let's go look at them. Pick me up later at the saloon. Oh, Owen. How are things? Quiet, Con. Getting ready for round them. Tough job. How'd you like to sign on? 30 a month in meals. <laughs> oh, not me. I sleep in a soft bed every night. Help you? 
I'm bringing the Faskins some cookies. Better push them into their cage with a stick. They're a troublesome pair. One inside. Might be catching. I understand the judge gave you boys a week. Judge. A stinking justice of the peace. Well, maybe next time we can arrange a real judge. Claw, hammer, coat, and all. Next time will be different. Lily's doing all right without you boys. Why don't you leave her alone? I don't see no missus in front of her name. Well, that happens. Not to a sister of ours. All right, act like jackasses and you'll be treated like them. When you get out, the sheriff will put you on the train himself. Show your faces after that and you'll be back. Right here for six months. You scare me. Just say the word and I'll order some curtains for this place. By the way, I've decided to go on roundup with him. Not so easy, Lee. There's some things and some people you can't run away from. Well, I'll think about that when I get back. You ought to think about it now. Hold it. There's a Cheyenne in that tree. <laughs> Got him. Hey, that thing jumped into your hand. How did you get it so fast? Practice, son. You ought to try it. I haven't got the time. Lee. The old Cheyenne camp. Yeah. Remember the night we rolled the rocks down on them? I remember when Arch caught us and the licking we got. I'd sooner have been scouted by the Cheyennes. A couple of fool kids playing with Indians. We had our times, didn't we? tried to push a windbroke gelding off on us, but Owen caught him up. Uh, Obi never quits trying. Uh, Arch, you know, I got to thinking last night. Come on, then. Tell me while you were walking. Come on, walk with me. Walk with me. Well, what started me thinking was that I saw a horse in ruins that I'd like to own. Yeah. And I began talking about price before I remembered that I'm strapped. <laughs> Buy him. We always got money for a good horse. Oh, I don't care about the horse. I probably own too many. No, Arch. The point is that a man my age, with a wife, with a father who owns half the county, has to hold off buying a horse because his wages won't let him afford it. Oh, listen, Lee. You haven't been able to trust me. Now, that's in the past, Arch. You were right, but it's done. I've been a good hand this winter, haven't I? Yes, you have. You think I know the cattle business? Maybe not as well as you were on but well enough to make money at it, huh? Of course, if you need more money, you'll get it. Let me tell you. When you came home with Jen last fall, I thought it was another piece of foolishness like all the others. It wasn't. Jen was something else, something right. That's why I put you on the top hand's wages. I'll raise them. Oh, no, Arch, that's, that's too easy. Either I'm your son, entitled to your trust, with the ranch or anything else, or I'm not. It's one or the other. What do you want? I want to be part owner of the ranch, Arch. I want to share in it. I'm married and settled down now. Why, here's where I'll live and raise my kids and die. Here's where I'll help take over from you when you've... had enough of the business. I'm not just camping here for wages. I'm here to stay, Arch. I'm your son. I've been thinking about it, too. More than you. A lot more than you. You're my own blood. A man has a debt to that. Oh, you've got no debt to me, Arch. Yeah, it's an old one. Began the day your mother died. You got it coming to you, Lee. For doing without her. <laughs> well, we've managed, old-timer. <laughs> Beginning to feel like one. 
I'll go in town tomorrow and draw up the papers. From now on, half the ranch is yours. Oh. My half will go to Owen when I die. <laughs> Hamilton. Flying H. Neely. Dog Iron. Sand. Lazy S double O. Frank Peter. Box Pitchfork. Frank Martin. Let's see, a uh, uh, box F. Double F. That's right, double F. What do you carry them in your head for? Well, you got 40 different brands, the biggest shuffle you ever saw. We'll have to move fast. Talk to you a minute, Owen. Sure, go ahead, Huey. I was back up in the mountains yesterday looking for the last of the horses. Oh, we finished the tally this morning. They're all in. There's a small jag of our cattle up there. Brands are still haired over, but I could tell they was ours. Couldn't stop because I was trying to turn the horses, and by the time we got them headed downhill, I was miles away. So you want to pick them up today? Well, I aim to this morning. They're gone. Well, they've probably been rounded up by the other crew already. Nope, they was drove the other way. Did you trail them? As far as I could. Let's go try again, Huey. I'll come with you. Dust up and get my gun, Huey. Better get Owens, too. Take a look at this shoe. You see the two clocks on the inside and how it's built up? This rider signed his name for us. Two horses and four steers. These tracks go straight for a while. Got dark on me here, and I turned back. Good place to cross. If they want to cross, you think like a cattle rustler. Let's look on the other side. Only one horse came out of the water here. I was right. This horse is a decoy. They either went up or downstream. You, you look below. Yeah. There ain't even been a horse down this way. There has been here. And they've been driving some steers ahead of them. Here's where they come out. That's her Beckett's place. Yeah. Let's go over and have a look. stick up. <laughs> Come here, Herb. Notice that cork. The built up inside of that shoe. Who owns the horse that wears it? Never seen it before. Another one. It's fresh. What about it, Herb? What about what? Whoever rode that horse drove four of our steers in here. Look, if you see your steers here, you can talk. If not, I ain't accountable. 
Get on your horse and get out of here. Herb, I figure you butchered that beef and buried the hides, but I can't prove it. So I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to show you what you buy into every time I track our cattle here. You are a pretty good saloon fighter, Herb. How are you without a bottle or a knife? Now we're going to take four of your steers. You licked him. Why go to jail for stealing his cattle? You talking as the new half owner? You got a roundup to go to, so have I. How are we going to make it if we're in jail? You coming, Huey? You're still foreman. You gonna keep me from going to the sheriff? Think back a ways, Herb. Did I put a gun on you? Did I shoot the knife out of your hand? Am I driving off your steers? I got no part in this. He's your foreman. Sad but true. Put a good price on your beef, Herb. You can't buy me off, don't try. It wasn't a $250 beating, was it? All right. It's a deal. But I ain't done with him yet. Long as I can look down a gun barrel, I ain't done with him. Come on into town with me. I'll get you the money. I can't sit a horse till I get this hand fixed and get a drink. Dancing tonight, son? I'm drinking tonight, Mr. Willoughby. Be careful that Applejack don't put your lights out. See no one? Start bleeding again. Jen took him to the house. Too tight? The tighter the better. You seem to be getting in a lot of trouble lately. Trouble? You don't have to, you know. You can stop them from saying those things about you and Lily. Oh, I don't mind. I happen to like Lily. There. Here, let me help you. Thanks, Jen. Owen, you can't make it up to Lily by yourself. If Lee was half a man and... I want to see Jen alone. Wait, Owen. Stay. What do you want? I'm leaving in the morning, honey. Big roundup. I'll be gone a long time. I know that. Well, I've got to say goodbye, don't I? Well, goodbye then. Oh, no. Not like that. Not anymore. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh. It's easy enough to lock one man out as long as there's somebody else to take his place, huh? Drunk, Lee. Drunk enough to see double. To see you here with Jen.
sorry you had to see that. I wish I could help you. Just knowing you're around helps. There are things I'd like to say. What would you say, Owen? I'd say I haven't got the right to help. I'd say it's too bad. Sore. Sit down. Still sore, huh? I guess you don't have much love for Daybright. My time will come. I hear the Faskin boys are getting out of jail soon. So I hear. And they'll still be looking for Papa. If I got them figured, Daybright will be dead in another few days. No, he'll be gone. The roundup? That ain't gonna be hard for him to find. Oh, a couple of saddle tramps like them would be picked up in no time at Roundup. No. In order for them to join, they'll have to have a letter of authorization from some well-known brand. Uh, like yours, say. They better try to keep them out. Sure, he will, if they try to join the Western Division. But if they ride to the Eastern Division, present your letter, they can get in. I'll be with the Eastern. Likely his wagon captain. East and West divisions meet, don't they, to finish up the roundup? Yeah. To finish up. You know, Herb, I should have made that check much bigger. That was a bad beating you took. Yeah. An awful beating. Jones Western. Huey, you're with me. Stu Miller Western. More of your reason. Hung over? I feel fine. How'd you make out with Baggett yesterday? I bought the steers. Good price? $250. Just for cattle? Yeah. I've decided to take your advice, Owen. I'm getting out of the country after this roundup. You? Starting all over again, working for a living? Yeah, just like that. What about Jen? I'll send for her when I'm ready. She'll join me. The nice morning, the day we left. The sun warm on your shoulders. But we didn't feel good. This time, there was something under your wishbone that said we were in for grief. Seems like they were just coming home from the winter drift. We turn around, they're off again. How do you feel about another month with me? Scare you? You'll wait for him alone this time. What's wrong, Jen? Something to do with Lee? I can't talk about it, Arch. Oh, sounds final. It is final. I was going to leave without telling you. Where are you, Jen? Can't I help you? You can't always make it up for him. I always have, till now. That's part of the trouble. Look, maybe it's my fault. Maybe it never could have worked. I'm restless here. I've been alone so long, I'm used to it. We've never lied to each other. We don't have to start now. Are you running away from Owen because he loves you? You're a good woman, Jen. Your life should be rich and peaceful. But if you run away from it now, you'll spend what's left with bitter memories and doubts. Wait till they get back. That's something like what Owen said. It's good advice, Jen.
The spring roundup is a cow hunt. In the winter, they drift. The aim is to get them back to the home range. Besides that, there's the calves. They make a tally, brand, crop, and dehorn. I was with Owen in the Western Division. We worked hard, and the hours were long. You didn't measure time by the day, but by the greening of the grass. It was all planned well, and the work went even and smooth. Guns. Get inside. I'll throw them on the back platform after the train starts. You were going to kill a man, remember? I ain't through yet. Next visit? That's right. Now I'm worried. Tell you to stay out. What do you want? Be neighborly. Help you find the man you're looking for, Dave Wright. Why do you care? I run a business. It's the business of moving cattle fast over long distances, mostly in rainy weather and at night. Dave Wright bothers me. Well, why don't you level on him then? That shouldn't bother a man like you. And hang? No. I'm looking for someone to shoot him who's got a right to. You found him. Here's the setup. Daybright's on Roundup. I can get you into it legally. Once you're there, you'll have no trouble finding him. Go on. When this train hits the top of bench grade, it'll be slowed to a walk. If we get off there, I got three horses waiting. Daybright will sure be surprised to see us. Yeah? Come on, here we are. side of the mountain, Lee was with the Eastern Division. More! Cut out all Omar brand. It's local. Turn them over to Mr. Jenkins here. Right. that brand. I read Obar. I take it back. It looked like mine. Satisfied? Satisfied. He's yours, Jenkins. What 
Brain, Hobar. See that pair with the pack horse behind Hardison? They brought this. Claim to represent an outfit near you. Yeah, they're from our part. Know his two riders? Yeah, I've seen them. All right, I'll assign them to your wagon. No, no, some of the boys having a very friendly feeling for that brand. Well, if they're wrong ones, I'll send them whistling. Well, you can't do that. They got a right to their stock. We'll keep a close lookout at the stuff they cut out. Meanwhile, assign them to another wagon. Somebody who doesn't know them. I don't want them around me. Well, that's fair enough. In Lee's division, the work was the same as ours. They'd make the combings, snake them out of the draws, gather them, push them toward the middle. stock we've seen. Yeah, they really wintered. Heavier than anything on the home range. Yeah. Looks like a bonus for all hands. Arch will be a rich man. So will you. You're a partner now, ain't you? That's right. I was forgetting. Well, I got a half a summer's work laid out. I'm heading for Texas to restock. Oh, you're going to get your beef from Texas all the way home to Montana. Yeah, by the time you buy your herd, Kansas will come up with some new kind of fever and quarantine you out. If you move to New Mexico, the same thing will happen. I reckon you'll just have to stay put in Texas, and that's no life. Now, son, you must have heard of railroads. I'm just going to lock my herd up in airtight boxcars, put a bag of that clean Texas air in each car, and unload in Montana. <laughs> Say, my name is Strobe. I, I don't think I got your name. Oh, Dave Allard. I, uh, I gathered you're sending your crew back to Montana with your strays while you head for Texas to restart. That's right. Well, I can save you the trouble. I'll have 3,000 double-wintered steers for sale at the end of Roundup. In good shape? You're picking them up every day. Look at them. They've got our brand. What price? Fourteen. Laid down to Wet Mountain Meadow. Fourteen. You just made a deal. I'll have to find the nearest telegraph station, and it'll take a few days till I can cover a check for forty-two thousand dollars. That's all right. Thanks, Mr. Willoughby. Why don't I save my money and buy a nice warm store I can sit in? I've seen them stores. They're drafty. Beats washing away. Sure does. Come on in out of the weather, friend. What are you? East or West Division? West. Name's Allard. Dave Wright. Thanks. I needed this. I need a horse, too. I wanted to ride on through tonight. Mine's beat. You get the man a horse. Where you headed for? I left the East Division for a few days. I'm looking for a telegraph. Missed it in the rain, huh? Man could miss anything in this. I don't know whether I'm drowned or not. <laughs> well, there's a telegraph at our meeting place, the Wet Mountain Meadow. Huey, change the man's saddle while he finishes his coffee. Say, is that your brand? That's right. I just bought your herd. That's why I was looking for a telegraph, to get my credit in shape by wire. Bought? You must be mistaken, mister. Trovi owned the brand? Yeah. That's it. 3,000 double winter steers delivered at the meeting place. 
Strobe is the owner, ain't he? He can sell them. Is there anything wrong? Not a thing, friend. Not a thing. Well, thanks for everything. I didn't think he could plan that far ahead. You reckon that's why Lee made his bid to be partner? That's why. Sell the beef and get the money to clear out. What's he running from? There's people he has to answer to. You always stand up for him, don't you, Owen? When you're loyal to a man, Hugh, you're loyal to everything about him. Even his faults. Even his son. Funny what you just said about Arch. I've been feeling that way a long time about somebody else. About Lily. Day by day and hour by hour, the two divisions pushed closer together. So did Owen and Lee for the showdown. Only an hour away, Owen. The Eastern Division's over the next hill. What's your count? Two thousand, yours? Good, a little over a thousand. Well, that gives you Alan's three thousand and some to spare. Who's Alan? Man, you're going to sell the herd to. That's right, so it is. It'd be news to Arch, especially since he's planning to go down to the panhandle and buy more stock. The deal's going through. How much is foreman Lee? And I'm a partner. I pay half your wages, remember? You give me half my orders? Your orders are to keep your nose out of my business. And let you steal Archer's cattle. I'm a little hard of hearing, Lee. Day after tomorrow, we start for home. It's a big herd. The man in the way could get run over. You better tell Alan it was a mistake to forget about it. Your orders are still to keep your nose out of my business. Wait a minute, Lee. I don't get it. You don't think you can pull this off with me around, do you?
Let's get on with the cut. Owen, figure this one out. I was working down by the river past the last of the wagons. Don't make sense. What? Well, passing one of the wagons, I saw those two Faskins. You sure? No mistake. They've been on Roundup. Stood there talking with the rest of the crew, needed a shave. They've slept in wet clothes like us. Lee knew it and didn't say anything. And he isn't worried like he should be. Owen. You know, I've been thinking about that deal I made with Dave Allen. Yeah? I admit I made a mistake. Like I always do when I haven't got you around to steer me. Well, I'm glad you see the light, Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd better get down to the depot and stop Allard before he gets too involved in that deal. Fine, you go ahead. W will you come with me? I'm pretty busy here. Well, it'll be much more convincing with you around. All right, I'll tell Mead we're going. Lee and I are going over to the Telegraph. We won't be long. All right. Remember now, we don't blast till daybreak gets to that boulder. Yeah, I'll remember. Looks like this is our last roundup together, Owen. Oh, I tried to pull a fast one on you by grabbing that Allard deal, but I couldn't. So I'm going anyway, just like I told you I would. Fine. I'm leaving you to win right down the line, Owen. I'm leaving everything. Arch, the ranch, Jen, you. It's yours, the works. You sure you thought this out good? Well, you've been trying to tell me for years how to do the right thing. You gave me the straight line about getting away from here and beginning all over again. I just kind of hate to do it, that's all. Maybe it's because, uh, well, we've had a lot of fun together. We have at that. Remember that time in Kansas City when Arch took us to the Cattlemen's Convention? Yeah. I played cards with the big Texan. Yeah, I remember. You beat him in five cold poker draws. Right. That's when I found out what good a kicker was. Yeah, we sure had a lot of good times, Lee. That's what I'll miss. I'll miss him, too. No matter how old you get, there's that part of growing up you never forget. I'm glad you said that, Owen. I'll remember that when I'm gone from you. Now. Where's Owen? Went with Lee over to the telegraph. You hear that? Somebody's in trouble. Take some in and go see. Go around the other side. Try to sneak up behind him. I'll cover you.
I'm taking you in, Lee. We're gonna settle up. Not a chance. We're gonna face Arch and tell him the whole truth. For once. Come on out. You're forgetting. I still got my kicker. I always could outdraw you, Owen. I'll spot you then, but it won't change anything. Come on out. Or do I have to come in and get you? That's the whole story, Arch. All of it. It was in front of me for years, Owen. I refused to see it. I lied to myself. You lied. To make it easier for me. You didn't kill him. I did. Long time ago. The day I looked away and hoped he'd change. Hoped he'd work out. I'll have to tell Jen. I'd like to tell her myself. <laughs> 